Good morning. What a beautiful city we're in. I was very lucky to come here yesterday afternoon and take a walk down by the Mississippi River and over to the Old Mill District, a great city, and construction going on everywhere. <laughs> That's a good sign, especially under Democratic leadership. We as Democrats have five great candidates running for president. And if you add up all the years of facing the voters of these five candidates, there are 92 years of serving an elective office. The leading Republican hasn't served a minute of facing the voters and serving an elective office. We as five candidates have 92 years combined. This is a big decision, obviously, in 2016, our great country of the United States of America, and who is going to be our leader. And I believe that three things should come into your minds if you decide who's going to be the next president, the 45th president. First, the past record, how have you performed? Second, your character. Who are you? Are you honest and courageous? Thirdly, what's the vision? Where are we going to take this great country, the United States of America? I'll tell you a little bit about myself. As the mayor said, I'm the only candidate running that's been a mayor, a senator, and a governor. 11 years as a councilman and mayor at the local level, and that means I know how to plow the snow. I know how to pick up the trash. I know how to have good schools, all the important things, and keep property taxes down. I wouldn't have been reelected three times if I wasn't doing those things. And I see over in Lebanon, in Beirut, the government's going to be toppled because they can't pick up the trash. Very basic stuff you learn at the local level. And then I went to the United States Senate, and I was there for the bad years of Bush and Cheney. Those were bad years. And even though I was a Republican back then, right away, I knew they were on the wrong track. And I voted against the big tax cuts that favored the wealthy and took surpluses and turned them into deficits. And then we had September 11th and the drum beat for a war in Iraq. And I saw through the reasons that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and was a threat. And I voted against the war in Iraq. And for you Minnesotans, your two senators who were uh, Mark Dayton, Senator Dayton at the time, now governor, of course, the great, my, one of my heroes, Paul Wellstone, with the two uh, Minnesota senators that joined the 23 to see through those false premises of war in Iraq. I was a reliable vote for the environment time and time again. I recognized the carbon dioxide and human activity uh, were causing climate change and was there on every vote uh, to regulate carbon dioxide, to prevent drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. I stood strong on civil liberties time and time again, on abortion rights, a woman's right to choose, over and over again, LBGT rights, over and over again. On immigration, there was a good bill called McCain-Kennedy, and there were only nine co-sponsors back 10 years ago in 2005. I was one of the nine bipartisan that stepped up and said, yes, we need a path to citizenship, yes, we need some border security, and I was one of the nine co-sponsors of that good bill. And I think we should bring it back, dust it off and bring it back, and get it passed. I voted against Sam Alito to the Supreme Court. I think I've been justified on that. And stopped John Bolton from going to the United Nations. Also, I'm proud that I was part of something called the Gang of 14, a bipartisan group that got together uh, to work to tr cross that partisan divide. Uh, seven Democrats, seven Republicans coming together in the Gang of 14. That's what we need more of in Washington, obviously. So I'm proud, I'm proud of the tough votes I took under pressure. That's always a good test under pressure. How do you perform? And I'm proud of those positions that I've taken in the United States Senate. And then, as RT said, uh, I became governor of Rhode Island in the depths of the recession. We had one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. Our people were losing their jobs and their homes to foreclosure. But we stepped up, did the hard work, got our people back to work, and we had the biggest drop of unemployment over my budgets of all but four states. At the same time, as uh, RT said, passing marriage equality, and we had the highest Roman Catholic state in the country. So that wasn't easy. We tried in previous years to get it passed, and, and I made it a priority. I put it in my inaugural address. I think it's important not only for people that love each other, obviously, but also for our economy. I wanted a tolerant atmosphere. That's what makes an economy grow. 
And it was also very controversial, and you see it playing out nationally, on getting undocumented students the right to have in-state tuition, the DREAM Act. And we worked hard for that. I got that passed. It wasn't easy. There were a lot of protesters coming out and, oh, as we pushed that through. And of course, the, one of the best rollouts, the Affordable Care Act. Very, very proud of that. That didn't just happen. I had to work at it, make sure we had a good team ready. This isn't going to be easy, getting people to sign up for exchange. We did it, and I'm very proud of that. And all through these almost 30 years of public service, I've had no scandals. <laughs> That's not easy in Rhode Island. So I'm proud of that, high ethical standards, the courage to take tough votes. I'm honest with our people, and I don't flip-flop. I'm proud that I'm consistent over time on the issues. The vision for the future, ladies and gentlemen, I served on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee when I was in the Senate, and I was lucky to chair the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee. And so I've been all through this hemisphere, down through Central America, South America. I had dinner with Fidel Castro in Havana. I've met many of the world leaders in Venezuela, Bolivia, Morales, in Ecuador, Correa, in Brazil, uh, Peru, throughout the Western Hemisphere. And then I became the chair of the Middle East Subcommittee and traveled throughout Israel, Jordan, Egypt, Afghanistan, Iraq, many of the countries in the Middle East, and Lebanon, and met the world leaders there. And we see now, with what happened with the Chinese currency and how it affected our stock market, that the cliche is true. The world is flat. We are all connected. And I'm running for president because I know we have big challenges out there. And I want to address them, make it a priority. We see the refugees flight fleeing the, the war-torn nations of Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Eritrea. And not only is it a human tragedy, but I fear, as they flood into Europe, the destabilizing of the governments there. We see here in the United States of America what right-wing groups can do when you have fear and anger with such a, a crisis occurring. So the rise of right-wing groups in Europe really is one of my concerns. Of course, the Iran deal. Let's have a hand for President Obama. <laughs> and Secretary Kerry. This is the way we're going to address these conflicts overseas. Because everyone's talking about the Iran deal and what a, how we stop Iran from get, acquiring nuclear weapons. But the other positive element of this Iran deal is that it was put together with the help of the Russians, with the help of the Chinese, with the help of the Brits, with the help of the Germans, with the help of the French. And that's how we're going to solve these conflicts in the Middle East and North Africa, especially with the Russians, the Chinese, and the Europeans. And so that's why it's so important to get this passed, not only because it stops Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, but it brings us together to work on resolving these conflicts overseas. So I do believe that prosperity does come through peace, and that's why I'm running for president. I want to make this a priority, addressing these conflicts overseas and ending them. All of us as Democrats are going to agree on many issues, as our Madam Chair said. We're going to agree on the environment. We're going to agree on women's issues. We're going to agree on the Affordable Care Act. I'm the one running for president that's talking about ending these conflicts overseas. I came up through the Vietnam era, and I really want to see our future generations not have to go through these endless conflicts. So, and I do believe, I do believe that 2016 is going to be a great year for Democrats. I do believe that because we are right on the key issues. We're right on income inequality. And the Republicans are all wrong. They turned surplus into deficits, and they like giving the rich more tax breaks. They're wrong on that issue. Democrats are right on universal health care. Who wants to go to the emergency room again with a five-hour wait to get your sprained ankle taken care of? We're right on immigration, the fastest growing voting block in the country. Of course we want that uh, people to be uh, treated with respect and to vote democratic. We're right on the environment, and the Republicans are wrong. Human activity is causing climate change. 
And we are right on that issue. We do see it happening with extreme weather. And everybody knows the Supreme Court affects our lives for decades to come. We have to have a Democratic president and a Democratic Senate and a Democratic House. And we are right. These are de Republican wars over there. They started these wars. We're right, and we're going to end them. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Prosperity through peace. Enjoy your convention. Enjoy Minneapolis. Thank you. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.